Hello, welcome to New Creature Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use the new Delta Deform Animation Compression functionality that was recently updated for Creature to actually deliver very high quality 2D mesh, animated mesh deforming character assets onto uh, like a web platform where size is of utmost importance, but so is quality. So if we take a look at this animation over here, let me play it again, you can see that it is a rather complex piece of animation. You know, it's a deforming mesh. You get all the wind motor, the wind is, is affecting the, the physics and all that on the character. It looks super cool. Plus the meshes are very complex on this character, very dense. And so we're going to take this and we're going to actually compress this down to hopefully less than 0 0.5 megabytes, believe it or not. So this will be a 3000 frame fully mesh deforming animation that we're going to compress down to less than half a megabyte. And we got, we're going to demonstrate this and other examples in Unity. Now the delivery mechanism for this is called the Creature Pack format. And here is the Creature Pack format. If you go to the Creature Unity runtimes, by the way, Creature Pack is also supported in the other runtimes as well. It's actually supported in Unreal Engine. It's supported in all the WebGL runtimes especially. And it's in, 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 in those cases, they're actually accelerated with the new fancy WebAssembly backend, so it's super fast. And what Creature Pack allows you to do is it delivers a very compact pure point cache format that's perfect for web and lightweight you know, delivery. It also is super fast, it's highly performant, and with this new functionality, it's even tinier. So we're going to be using the Creature Pack runtimes. If you don't know what the Creature Pack runtimes are, please go into the Creature Pack runtimes page on, uni on, the, on the Creature Unity runtimes uh, GitHub and read for yourself. The full description is over there. But basically, it's a very lightweight format. It's very little setup cost. It's extremely useful for animating tons of characters in crowd situations and also for delivering very lightweight uh, animations for, say, w the web or online platforms. OK, so without further ado, let's see how we can compress this animation and ex export it out with the new animation compression functionality. So without further ado, let's export this guy for the game engine. So move your mouse over to export and then click on game engines. I will maximize this to full screen so you can take a look. So at the beginning, you'll see there's two panels. This panel over here with the character animation caption is especially important because it shows you the actual file size as this animation is getting exported out. So you can see the JSON size, the, the, the flat buffer size, and more importantly, what we care about today is the creature pack size. And you can see it's ridiculous. It's 24 megabytes. Well, the 24 megabytes because the mesh, again, is very dense. I switch to wireframe mode. The mesh is very dense. It's 3,000 frames. So what do we do? Well, very simple. First things first, we can actually take the resolution down with the advanced remeshing tool. So this will actually dynamically remesh your character to reduce the resolution of the mesh, but still try to preserve quality. And it, as you can see, we've taken the triangles down to 1,882. And immediately, the creature pack size is now down, down to 11 megabytes. Not bad, right? Let's see if we can take it down a bit more. Let's see what happens. So this is the, probably the first thing you, you want to do when you're actually trying to reduce the size of your exported animation, right? So, okay, so we have something around here. Let's see what happens when we, we maximize it. I just want to see the, the difference in quality so you can actually tell how much of the mesh actually changed. So you can see some parts of the sword were cut off, right? So if you, if you, if you want to have a, have a good mix between quality and also size, you should play around with the resolution parameters to see how much uh, degradation in the mesh you can afford to take. You can also actually specifically fix resolutions. So for example, I can fix the sword, in this case to 100%, or maybe I can switch it to say 80%. So I'm, I'll, I'll force the remeshing tool to always say the sword is always at 80%, but every, everywhere else, the mesh, uh, there you go, the meshes are allowed to actually reduce in size. So now I can I can pin the resolution of the sword, but then keep, you know, keep dynamically remeshing the rest of the body parts, right? So there you go. So now I have a you know, mostly high quality sword. It's 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 something it's 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 a quality I can accept and also I have the rest of the character 
also remeshed. So as you can see that the mesh is a lot sparser now. So that's the first thing you can do, but you know, it's still kind of a large size. So what do we do next? The next thing you want to do is to change the gap step, right? You can change it for both the regular and the creature pack. Normally, if you're doing the regular, regular creature export format, you would change the gap step here. But if, you're, if you care about creature pack, you change it here. I'm going to change it for both. It doesn't really matter. But well, it does matter because we're doing creature pack, but I'm saying it doesn't matter for the original original format. So a gap step of 10 means that you're, the animation is going to sample or drop and interpolate between those drop frames. And it's going to actually compress it down by a much larger, but larger factor, like 10 times. So let's see what happens now. So if we have a gap step of 10, you can see the quality is actually still preserved. It's actually pretty good. And now, our creature pack size is down to 3.44 megabytes. Not bad, right? Let's see if we can up the gap step even more to say 12. Let's see what happens. And as you can see, it's still rather good. <laughs> Let's see if we can do a gap step of 15. Now normally what you can do is you can keep trying different gap steps until the quality really drops below a threshold you cannot accept. But actually, in, a, in case of many creature animations, because the the interpolation and the actual anim core animation is so of high quality, if you do it with motors, that you can actually afford a really high compression gap step. So now I'm I'm down to 2.31 megabytes, right? So maybe maybe 12 was good enough. I think 12 12 had a good compromise between quality and size. But in any case. I am down to 2.87 megabytes. Now the next thing, the next thing you can do is using the, the, the new Delta Compress functionality. So you click on that, and if you try 2x, let's see what happens. So now we are down to 1.74 megabytes, right? And then if I do a 4x, let's see what happens. In 4x, I'm actually down to 0.61 megabytes, which is really tiny, by the way. So this is this is a huge amount of compression you can do for, I need to remind you again, 3,000 frames of animation. Now I can probably take down the remeshing just to see if I can just reduce the, there you go, if I if I reduce the the mesh even more, if I test if I if I dynamically remesh even more, I can drop the creature pack size now down to 0.47 megabytes which is a very, very small size for a 3,000 fully mesh deforming character. I think you agree on that, right? So let's toggle the, the gap step up to 15 now and see if we lose any quality. I believe 15 actually might be okay for this, and actually it is. So I'm at 3, 0.39 megabytes, right? If I do go back for, to Delta Compress and try 2x, let's see what we get. So I'm at 1.1 megs. Now I do have to remind you that 4x is a bit extreme. You have to test it out in Unity to actually to actually see the final result if you're using Creature Pack for Unity. And you might decide that 4x might be too extreme and you want 2x, but flip between the two values to see which one is more appropriate. Again, this is a very extreme case, a very uh, a very good example where we're literally trying to compress a 3,000 frame 2D mesh deforming character at asset. So in most cases, your creature pack sizes are going to be a lot smaller. So so if it works for this, you work for most. Now we're going to export both 2x and 4x into the Unity game engine and we're going to take a look at the difference in quality. So you can then pick and decide which one you prefer, right? In some cases, the 4x might be too extreme, so you might get unusual perturbations in the quality of the export animation. So if 4x is too extreme, in that case, you have to switch to 2x. And so I would recommend you trying both. OK, so now we're going to click Export, right? And then you pick your folder. You pick your folder, and then it will actually export out the creature pack file. If you don't know how to import the creature pack file, please go online and read the tutorials, especially the Unity creature pack runtime, to learn how to import the creature pack file into Unity. And with that, I'm going to switch to the Unity game engine, and we're going to take a look at, at this exported character and some other examples. Right, so welcome to Unity. And as you can see, I have the three characters that we just exported out from, from Creature, and we have imported them into Unity and placed them side by side. These are all Unity UI elements, by the way. So this the, the characters obviously are the 
creature pack runtimes running in real time. This is completely in real time. And the text, these are all Unity text components. So let's start with the, the, the one on the right. <laughs> the one on the right is no compression. Now after the gap step and resolution remashing, we have managed to get the, the entire size down to 4.28 megabytes. So that's the, the, you know, the maximum you, you can accept, you, 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 can, you can get using just pure resolution remeshing. Now in the center, this is with the 2x deform delta deformation settings with gap step compression. I think it's about 15 or 12, I forgot which one it is, but it's around that, that ballpark. You get it to around one megabyte, which is quite impressive for 3000 frame fully deforming mesh deforming animation with this quality. Now on the left is the best. This is the 4x deform delta with gap step compression and you're down to a really tiny 0 0.35 megabytes. 3000 frames fully mesh deforming character at 0 0.35 megabytes. Very impressive. So this is perfect for any sort of web delivery, web online delivery, website delivery, where size is of utmost importance and you care about bandwidth or you want to throw a ton of characters. Say you wanted to throw, I don't know, 50 different kinds of characters and you wanted to squeeze them all into your binary executable or web del delivery platform, you would probably want to do something like the 4x delta or 2x delta. Again, please take a look to see if there's any animation uh, degradations or, or strange perturbations that will cause you not to use the 4x delta because the 4x delta is pre pretty extreme compression so it, try, it still tries its best to preserve quality but there's some limits obviously to it because you can compress it down to a really tiny size so if 4x delta doesn't work I would highly recommend you stick to 2x delta. In most cases, actually, 2x delta is more than good enough. It works for almost all cases. 4x delta depends on the case, but in many, many examples, it will actually work. So again, experiment between the two, the two, the two values to see which one works for you. Now let's take a look at some other examples. So here is the Raptor running as well. You can see with no compression and you know with some resolution remashing, we are down to 3.89 megabytes. With 2x delta and gap step compression, we are down to less than megabyte now, 0 0.78 megabytes. And then with a 4x delta, which is still a very high quality, we are down to 0 0.22 megabytes. And this, this character itself has like five or six different animations, has multiple animations. So it's a very good example of what a character animation is and how much you can compress it, right? And let's see what else we have. So here's another character. And in this case, you can see with no compression, we're at 2.54 megabytes with the 2x delta and gap step compression, 0 0.37 megs, again, very good. And at 4x delta, now you can see just a bit of, you see a tiny bit of a natural perturbation here. So it depends on how much you can accept. But if you can accept this quality, if it's on a small screen, or in another case where it doesn't show up, then go for the 4x delta because you're at 0 0.14 megabytes, an insanely tiny size. You have an 18x compression ratio here in this case, right? So that basically concludes concludes my tutorial on how to actually export, package, and compress your character with the new powerful animation compression functionality of the Creature Animation Tool. You can see that you can actually package up a very complex, very high quality animation and deliver it in a very tiny size, perfect for web and online delivery platforms using the new gap step and deform delta compression mechanisms that was introduced into Creature. So I hope you enjoy this very, very powerful functionality and I hope you use it for any sort of bandwidth, bandwidth, you know, any bandwidth limiting or online web slash size, size, uh, tiny size delivery platforms. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching and uh, happy animating.